letters. If we want you to learn, what do we need? We need some blood. <laughs> um, okay, present tense subjunctive. I'm going to reduce the past tense subjunctive, well, to two gestures here and then 15 gestures. Okay, but we're going to talk about the 15 gestures. First of all, the two gestures, it's either ara or iera. That simple. Ara or iera. Ara obviously is making reference to what? Which group of verbs? A and Ah, Eddie. Ah, Eddie verbs. Can you do like you did before? Take the ada and run. Take the ada and run. Do it for me real quick before I put it in there and then we'll double check. You're better off cognitively taking those risks. Take that ada and run. What are you adding to the next one? Essay, you're having an essay. Wait a minute, somebody's paying attention. Somebody took their medication today. <laughs> What do we do with that essay to get to the third line? You drop the essay to show respect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ara, aras, ara. Something special going on here. The next one is aramos. The other option was iera. Don't get your iera. Hopefully you hear both of those vowels in that diphthong. Iera. Iera. Right? <clears throat> Take the iera and run. Take the iera and run. Against the board. Okay. Eh, sí. Yo no lo uso. Ya está desapareciendo. Eh, en España hay más, pero Pedro me, eh, me mandó un email con UBS o algo así ayer, cubano. Eh, but I just work with this one. I don't really get it. Why complicated? You'll see it. Okay. Uh, Good, we have one problem group of verbs. Okay, all right. I do not believe so. Hablarais, stress is here. Comierais, stress is there, where it needs to be, next to last syllable. All right, so this is your two for one. You're here for the subjunctive, and you're gonna get the preterite. Okay, in 10 minutes or less. Why would you wanna? Complicate manners and give us the preterite because the preterite is where we get the root. If we went back to the old form for the present subjunctive, for the past subjunctive, we do need the ellos form. That's where these are coming from, like aron. Ellos hablaron ayer, ellos trabajaron siete horas, ellos vivieron en México durante dos meses y luego volvieron. Aron y eron is where these came from. Well, at least that's how we now describe it, so we have a place to go back to. The problem is that the group of middle verbs, this is a sheet that I use in my Spanish, uh, actually it's from Spanish 2, my Spanish 2 class. It's been updated for my Spanish 4 and 5 class, okay, but it started in Spanish 2, updated in Spanish 4. I'm really after the middle 15 in this, at this moment, okay? The top, of course, we have our regular verbs. And then we have the spelling change group, the car, gars, ours, if you ever heard to those referred to as that, right? It's important for the preterite. It's also important for the subjunctive because we have our opposite endings. We've got those same changes coming in the preterite. Present, present, excuse me, present subjunctive, that is. Then we have this group of verbs. Notice that in the middle section, there is not a single accent mark. Those 15 verbs, not a single accent mark. That's because none of the last vowels are stressed. They're all normal. 
It's the next to last syllable that gets distressed. The stress. Okay, that's why they have no accent marks. Knowing that, it doesn't matter whether they're a eri, a eri, or e eri, they all take the same endings. The top 10 take the endings over there to the right. The e, iste, o, imo, sieron, ieron. And the bottom five take those ones. The only difference between those two groups is that the e in the ustedes and vosotros, or the ustedes and ellos forms is gone. Years ago when I was teaching 201, I thought, oh, these darn verbs, I get tired of seeing them with accent marks. Sympathize with me? How many times have you seen these verbs with accent marks? Too many. Uh, so I thought, I need a way to train these guys. Uh, you think I was kidding about operant conditioning? No. Uh, students, lab rats, dogs, uh, there's a lot of parallels. Doesn't mean I want to diss on you. I'm just saying that you can be trained, and you can train yourselves. You can train each other. There's a good thing about it. Good. I'm going to train you like lab rats. 15, the hardest 15 verbs. After these 15 verbs in the preterite, if you go in the normal order, present, either the imperfect or the preterite, and then the imperfect, everything else verb wise is downhill. This is the hurdle. Okay? I put them on flashcards. I put a aser on one side and I put ise on the other side. And in 15 minutes, I had a whole classroom of 201 producing the correct verb for me, like lab rats. But the problem was, they didn't know the meanings of half of them. And what's the point of knowing how to conjugate a verb if you don't know the meanings? Okay? So just like I tie the go verbs, if this one was which one, do this for me and tell me what it was. Tango. It was tango. It's now tuve. Right? So there's a gesture for each one. You'll see a parallel with the Go verbs, we're going to be using those same gestures. So instead of hago tortillas, I made tortillas, it's ise. All right, I need lots of people working with me and repeating. Por favor, ise. Ise. Quise. Quise. Supe. Supe. What is, what, why two hands? Why supe? What does supe mean? I found out. It's the information. I got the news. I heard the word supe. Right? Supe. The next one is not a high frequency verb, but it's just like saber, it's, it's in there in any case. Here it goes, coupe. coupe, meaning I fit into that Volkswagen with 10 of my friends after we drank that case of uh, whatever. Okay, <laughs> eh, coupe, anube, estuve, tuve, puse, pude, why pude? I was able to and did. I succeeded in mission accomplished. If I say no pude, what does that mean? I failed. I failed. I wasn't able to, but I attempted. Just like the key say literally means I tried. Doesn't mean I wanted, but I can. It can also mean I loved and don't any longer. Key say I tried. No key say? What's no key say? I refuse to. You'll find all those verbs usually listed as verbs with special meanings in the preterite. You'll find them listed that way in the 501 verbs in the grammar Spanish two books. If you guys are not bibliophiles, you should be bibliophiles. Go find a couple of good books on learning Spanish grammar. You can't get it enough in class if you really hope to use the language. Okay, back to the gestures so we can get moving. Here we go. Ise, 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 Supe, Supe, Supe. Andube. Andube. Andube, of course, means I walked. I walked. When you're in Spain, they're going to mess this one up. They're going to say on day. In Spain, they make that mistake. I know, it sounds weird, but that's the Spain thing. Okay, andube. andube. Estuve. Estuve. Trick question. If you know the answer, don't. If I say estuve en casa a las seis, what am I saying? My students don't speak because you've heard this. If I say estuve en casa, Nico, thank you for being courageous. Oh, gosh, my hand is swollen. <laughs> <laughs> What's estuve en casa a las seis mean? Like I was in it and then I left? No, I was in it and then I left. No, no, no. Estuve means I arrived. I arrived. Uh, I, arrived. Uh, I got there. It's the moment. Just like supe, it's the moment the news gets to you. Tuve una carta is not I had a letter. It could be, but it's usually I. See. Received a letter. I got it. It's the moment. The preterite is focusing on the moment. Pude, I was able to and did. Woohoo! Thumbs up. Okay? 
All right, uh, let's start at the top again. Here we go. Ise, kise, supe, kupe, antube, estube, tube, puse, pude, vine, dije, traje. What's a traje de baño? Uh, bathing. bathing suit. So if I say traje un traje, I brought a suit. Traje, okay, traje. Uh, next one. Conduje, which is another verb for drive. Some of you use manejar, conducir, also is a verb for drive, but basically to show you that the pattern has been established. We got all the seer verbs. Conducir, conduje. Traducir is to translate, and it is traduje. And producir, you gotta think back when they were cranking movies manually. Produje, I produced. Okay? That will give you the imperfect subjunctive forms. So, <clears throat> combine these and you end up with estuviera. Estuviera. Pudiera. Viniera. Pusiera. You got it. Okay, so there are all of the forms. So now we've got all of the forms. Si? Si, gracias, señor. Usted es muy amable. 25 minutes. Let's go this way. Um, <clears throat> no, no. Hang on, change plan. We're going to get to the wedding. Who was my wedding man, right? You've you heard it as wedding. Yeah, I don't have uh, lots of other for us. Well, thank you. <laughs> Um, wedding. <coughs> We're going to be coming back to wedding over the next uh, three weeks. Quite a bit. Wedding. Anybody know what the day or the double is? Wishes. Wishes, okay. The A would be emotions, emotions. doubt, denial. 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 And personal expressions. Are these just my students saying this? So I got. I, Got other people over here. So you guys are you familiar with this? Non-existent or hypothetical? Sometimes this will show up as adjective clause. I want to meet a woman that has green eyes, that has que tenga ojo, dos ojos azules. Okay. Necesito unos zapatos que me quepan bien. Oh, where did quepa come from? Caber. Yeah, the yo, the yo form of caber, it's regular. In the subjunctive, it's no, it's capo. Yeah, a weird one, but it's regular and subjunctive because it's following capo. And non-existent. And finally, God granting your ojalá or ojalá que. Okay. All right. So we won't need to spend too much time on that. We're going to be looking at this. What was the e? Impersonal expressions. I like to start with the impersonal expression. Because we can take some, some fact, if, you, if there are such things as facts, I'm not really sure anymore because I follow what's happening in the world in the United States, political stuff, and it's like, what is a fact? There are no facts. It's all a bunch of fabricated nonsense. But maybe you guys would disagree. Here it is. Ustedes están aquí. Is that a fact? Ustedes están acá? Ustedes están aquí? Is that a fact? Impersonal expression. How do I feel about that? Or how do you guys feel about the fact that nosotros estamos aquí? Indicative. Now, I'm going to look at it. I'm an optimist. I like, I don't like to give people fish. I like to teach people to fish. You're here to learn to fish. So I'm going to say this is good. I'm going to say es bueno que. Okay. I've now added an impersonal expression to something that pre-existed. Now I have a grammatical problem. Ross? Oh, uh, what's the name of If we think about wedding, es bueno que, okay. it's good that. Does that sort of kind of fit in one of these? Wishes, emotion, doubt, denial, and personal expression? Well, it's, of course it's an expression, an personal expression, but essentially, can we associate a bueno okay with one of these? Yeah. Emotion. It's an emotion, right? 